Hi, my name is Sean Ennis from Ennis Management. Thank you for joining me again on the Creative Collective. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, Courtney Jackson. Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Thank you for joining me today. So, you're the lead singer of the Chosen Few of Omaha, a gospel quartet group. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so... Not just... And, and, Yes, we, we are a quartet, but we do all styles of music. We have, on a, on our latest release, we have a country song that we're doing. we got some praise and worship. Uh, but yes, we are quartet-based, but we don't let the genre of that style just define us. We like to be able to sing to all audiences. And so for maybe a younger audience who's not quite familiar what what sort of what what do people um, think about when they hear quartet group? What what sort of things come to mind? Uh, most well, I guess there there's there's two sides to that. Um, if you are rooted in it, uh, then you have a better understanding of it. People who who has never heard it, um, if they hear the stereotypical things they may say it's old school um now there but there is another audience that has never heard it that when they hear it because they have no preformed judgments they're like where have you guys been you know so it really depends on 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 their their level of knowledge of the gospel industry itself, as well as quartet, uh, rather you, because some people start off quartet, and when they start off quartet, they're, they're born and bred in it, so they know it like A to Z. Then there's some people that start off praise and worship and contemporary, and, and they either, there's either one of two things, they either be like, hey, you know, okay, that's a different style of gospel, like it, or they have a already have the pre pre notions of uh well those those guys are like this or like that and they may not even give a chance for the music and they just already have a preformed judgment and just won't give it a chance but what but the one thing about quartet is the roots it's the roots of all gospel i'm talking about you go back to sam cook uh a lot of uh Lou Rawls, you go back to a lot of your major, um, um, what's what's his name, Johnny um, Johnny Taylor. All these guys were quartet, you know. Um, it's it's the roots of the gospel, but you know, uh, I mean, to, everybody has their own flavor of what they do, you know. So it's it you have a lot of different, and now quartet even has variations. They have what's called new age quartet. They have what's called contemporary. So uh, it just depends on what, what what's your flavor, unfortunately. And who are the members of the Chosen Few of Omaha? Uh, the Chosen Few of Omaha consists of uh, some family and some God brothers. There's uh, Richard Adams, which is the drummer. Marcus Myers, the bass player. Uh, we uh, we call him Tat, but Eric Smith is is one of the singers. Um, me myself, Malcolm Ramsey, keyboard player. Uh, Timothy Corbett, also a keyboard player, singer as well. And we have uh, a host of various family members that are musically gifted and inclined, and they 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 go along with us for the journey on on many occasions as well. And when did you guys? Um sort of come together? Well, I'll tell you, it didn't start off as the chosen few of Omaha. I started a group, I'm going to say approximately about 13, 14 years ago, might even be longer than that, called Second Chance. Uh, I've been singing uh, gospel quartet. Like I said, I was born and bred in it. So I'm one of those ones that I've been in it all my life. So I've been doing this since I was a child. Um, I've sung with some uh, uh, two groups. I sung with a group called the Omaha Travelers. Well, it was the Gospel Travelers. They later changed it to the Omaha Travelers uh, since the time I was like 
uh, seven years old. Before that, it was Spiritual Clouds of Joy. I was still a baby then. My dad sung with them. I was three. They used to put me on the table with a big acoustic guitar and tie my daddy necktie around to hold it up. Uh, that Spiritual Clouds of Joy, I was probably like three years old up until the time I, I became seven. And then I started singing with the uh, Travelers. Uh, later in life, as I got older, I began singing with a group called The Faithful Few. Um, I was with them for like three and a half, four years, and was blessed. They were based out of St. Louis, though. And so then I came, came home, and I started Second Chance, which later turned into The Chosen Few. And so basically, we just changed. We changed. We had changed a few members from Second Chance, and changed the name, and we kept it going under. Uh, the chosen few. So, as the chosen few, we have been the chosen few for like four, four, four and a half years now, maybe five. So that's that's kind of where it all started, up to the where we are now. And going, uh, speaking of where it all started, do you have an earliest memory that you can think of involving music? Uh, you know, uh, honestly, kind of like I was telling you a moment ago. Uh, I remember following my dad and my uncles, my whole family. If, well, I shall say, in my family, you have one of two things. Well, one of three. You have three things. You have one of two things, but there, you have the alternative of three things. The one thing is you're going to church. <laughs> you, I mean, you're going to give God. You have to, you're going to give your life to God. You're going to church. That's the one thing. That's the muscle. Uh, they they wouldn't let you around that. The other one, the other two things is either you're going to be in music or you're going to be in sports. That's that's how my family. So they try to. They've always instilled that in us as children. And I understood as I got older. I understood what it was about. It was about keeping us busy to not allow us to fall in the traps of the streets. Uh, so you, they they keep. Yep, they kept you active. I played basketball, football, wrestled, uh, tried a little boxing. So you had, you, I mean, you you pretty much, you were going to do one or the other. I happened to fall in love with both. Uh, so I, I did both. Um, and that's kind of the, I mean, you go back to my grandmother. Both of my grandmothers were uh, played piano, you know. That's something I can't do, but both of my grandmothers uh, played piano one. Uh, one is uh, gone, rest, rest his soul, but uh, they both played piano. One of them was a, a minister of music at a church. So family, I'm, my uncles, they had a groups, uh, my aunties. So it's just my mom's song, my dad's song, mom's a minister. So it's like it, it, in our in our family, you, 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 you have a few choices. But I also grew up in an era where Everything wasn't about a video game and, and, my, and technology, so we went outside and played back then. So that kind of made a difference. And now things are a little different because you got so much technology, man. We do whatever we want with these phones, these tablets, these computers, these games. So the the physical exercise is not like it used to be. But that's that's where it all started for me. Like I said, when I was three years old, three four years old, I still remember to this day. And I'm gonna. If my, my mom has, she has probably a hundred thousand pictures, and I'm gonna dig through there and see can I find some. But uh, they used to literally sit me, stand me on the 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 offering table at churches with an acoustic guitar, and they tie it on me with my daddy's necktie. <laughs> so <laughs> those were some of my those are some of my memories. Um, I just had, I, and the good thing about it is is I had a lot of I had a lot of good men as role models in music in my life as well as in sports too I, I they, you know they and then it takes you know the old saying it takes a village and it, it's kept me uh, from a lot of things that I could have got into so I'm thankful for them and who were some of your musical influences say uh, growing up under the Travelers I would have to say uh, John Colbert uh, Tim McGee 
Uh, later on, I, I, as I got older, um, I was always crazy about listening to Joe Lagun. Um, a friend of mine who I sung with for years, uh, Walter Garlington Sr., uh, all these people were kind of, they were kind of, they were the influences that, that were right there with me, that I was able to, to study under, to be right there with. Uh, but I, I like, man, I'm, I'm, I like, so I'm, 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 I'm not just, uh, I am a gospel singer, but I like all forms of music. I listen to country, I listen to jazz, I listen to blues, because you, I, I mean, I like so many gospel artists. I like, I mean, I like Kirk Franklin, I like Fred Hammond, uh, but, you know, when it comes down to quartet, man, there's so many, there's so many greats. The Swanee Quintet, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, Willie Neal Johnson, the Keynotes. But I remember growing up, Jack and Southern Air is going to all these concerts. Now, as time has progressed, now some of the people that are more, uh, more figures in my life, uh, I don't know, if, uh, Pop Jones, Fred Jones Sr. of the Jones Family Singers, George Dean of the Gospel Four. These are some people that are mentors to me, uh, so I appreciate them as well. There's just I just had I've had a lot of influences over the course of time in the gospel industry. And can you describe one of your first times on stage performing? Uh, my first time. My first time, I wasn't really. My first time, I wasn't even really old enough to realize what I was doing. I just remember being a kid, and I was at that time. I was simply mimicking my dad, <laughs> and and the people were up and they were chat clapping and cheering, and and I was simply mimicking my dad. I mean, that's what kids do, you know. So, uh, and as you know, time has gone on, and my dad has been, you know, not to slight him either, because he's definitely been uh, uh, an influence, because had it not been for me traveling and going from church to church, singing with him, um, I don't know if I, I would have, music would always have been there, because that's my family, but I don't know if I would be as heavy into it as I am now. So my dad, Tommy Jackson, he definitely played a uh, played a role as far as musically in, in in my life. So now I want to talk about your previous project that you that you released, Mainline. Can you talk a little bit about that? Mainline, well, Mainline was not the project. Uh, Mainline was the single from the project that is to come. Uh, so the. The previous project we did was entitled Get Right. Now, that was before we changed the name. That was under the name Second Chance. And then we changed over. And so that was the previous project. But Mainline is the single that we have out now. Uh, it has it has made Billboard. Um, and actually, it is going on to a compilation project here coming up with Band Geek Music Group called We Got Next 2 volume two uh so it's been doing pretty good for us we're really finna we um you know we we've been singing it a little but we have so many other songs that we haven't been singing it as much we are really about to get into because people been asking for it so we're about to really you know start start pushing that one a little more because we got it we trying to get ready for to push the new project so we know we need to push the single as well as the new project that we are almost completed with we got a few more steps to take and our plan is for june um but you know how, how things go what 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 happened it would have been done uh and, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to tell it i was blessed uh back in september uh, went to the doctor end up finding out make a long story short, had uh, colon cancer. So it held us up because they wouldn't allow me to sing for quite a few months. I didn't get, I was from from like the beginning of September until like the end of November was the, when they finally let me start singing again. So I couldn't go to the studio. I couldn't, couldn't rehearse with the group. Couldn't, couldn't, we, so we were kind of on, we were kind of held up at that point. So now 
we are we are back at it the lord blessed me i didn't do one day of chemotherapy uh i was blessed it was it was called early they took me into surgery first time i've been in the hospital for anything so it was a different experience i went in the hospital like four four or five different times within within a month but you know i'm, I'm grateful i'm thankful uh i've watched so many friends that have died from from cancer uh, but the Lord saw fit to let me still be here, and I, I promised everywhere I go, I would I would tell my story, um, how how He delivered me and how He's blessed me. So I mean, so it, it, it kind of pushed things back a little, but we are we are we are working to finish it. We're pretty close to finishing it. There's like four songs we need to complete, uh, as far as lead. The background vocals and music and everything is already done, so it's just a few things that we need to finish up on, and, and then we, we should be ready to pretty much push it from there. Well, I certainly want to wish you the best in terms of your health. For um, artists that are solo artists, can you kind of describe the music making process when you have such a large group of people involved? When you, as far as the studio, it's a process because you have to already know uh, the format that you're you're planning. You sit down, you you have to put your songs together that you're planning to record. You got to go through paperwork, uh, copyright paperwork, as well as like on some songs, our our um, our arrangements of like traditional hymns. So you got to go through all the processes for that. Uh, then you have to establish if you have not already established. For instance, with a large group of, like us, we have we have musicians, we have a band, we have producers. Uh, so at that point, they uh, you go in and you you lay the groundwork for the music, understanding. And the thing about it, understanding for radio, it has to be within a certain time frame. So it's not like a live. It, you're singing, but it's not necessarily like a live performance where everything is is going to go into this you have to you have to scale it down because basically you're giving a presentation of what of what you of what you the things that you have to see um so it's not it's not necessarily the full scale of the song but because of radio you have to have it within a certain time format so there's some things that you may have to say hey we can't put this on the album i might not be able to put this verse on the album we may not be able to put this on here so you have to format it for cd okay so once once you do that uh pretty much you go in and start laying the foundation of the music of how you want this to go because when it's being produced at that point, they have to um, put it because because you're basically going through the steps, going through the steps, and you want to uh, make sure that you're within the time frame. You want to make sure that you deliver. You have enough time to deliver the message without it being too long for radio. Otherwise, if it is too long, and, and it can be too long, sometimes that's okay because you can cut it and you can do a radio edit. And then the people that's buying it on the, on the CD or on the downloads, they'll still get the full scale version of it. So there's there's ways around it, but um, that basically you go in, you start with that, then you go in and you kind of uh, lay the background. If, if there's any changes you're going to make, you all kind of go through that and kind of make sure you work that end of it to make sure everybody's on the same page. You know, hey, normally when we live, we do this, but on the CD, we're going to turn right here, you know. So you kind of make sure everybody's on the same page. You go in, then you lay the background vocals. Once the background and the music is mixed, then it's simply time for you to, as the, as, as whoever's leading, to tap in and, and, and start following the structure that you've laid. Because by this time, you've heard the song a million times, but every time it's, it's something about after you listen to it so long your mind starts wondering you start speaking speaking to god and you'll be like okay well i want to relay this message and i want to relay this message but you can't unfortunately you have to come to a conclusion because uh again like i said it has to be within a certain format and you know you can't have it too long without doing a radio edit and you want the the key points of the message that you're trying to deliver to stick out. So uh, that's basically the process of it. After that, the the producers they do what they do. They do the mixing and mastering and 
you know what what you know the magic that they do behind the scenes and from that the production part of it is done but then the real work starts <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's, that's just that's the that's the beginning stages. The real work starts once the project is finished. And can you describe the versatility of your music? Uh, the versatility of our music comes from because, again, like I said, we're mostly family, and those that are not family that are like we're, we're we're still family, even though some of us are not blood. Uh, with the versatility of music. Uh, we we don't we like all styles of music. We like praise and worship. We like contemporary gospel. We like country music. We like jazz. We like blues. We listen to R and B. You know, it's it, music. Music is universal. The words that are delivered within it is what changes the intent of it. And so we simply we simply. Like because we like so many different styles, we we set out to attempt those, you know, within our realm of the gospel. So we'll even though yes, we're a quartet, but quartet does praise and worship too. Quartet does can do. I, I mean, and 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 the term the the musical term for certain types of R and B is what they call folk. You know, the Gap Band, all those types of things. Music. Is still music. That's just like when you take Kirk Franklin's stuff. That's what that's what that comes from. That that comes from that the music comes from funk, but it's it's the intent that he put behind it. So I mean, we like we like that style of music as well. So we we try to institute everything in our project. Like I said, we have a country song. Um, we have straight quartet. We have straight traditional. We have praise and worship. Uh, you name it. Uh, I, what I'm going to do, I'm, uh, at some point, I'm going to get you our previous project, uh, and that way you can actually, you can actually hear the variances of styles that, that we, of the music that we have already before the new project comes out. But yeah, we just like, I mean, our style is, is what you would call, I would call, I guess you would say fusion. And what, what I mean by fusion is it has a lot of different styles infused into one and molded into what the uh, molded into the style that we are. So. And can you talk about some of the challenges in maintaining a group? Uh, some of the challenges in maintaining a group uh, is if you don't have. Uh, godly and family atmosphere. Godly atmosphere is first, but you must also have a family atmosphere. And the reason for that is because it gets tough traveling up and down the highway. You're leaving your family. You're leaving your home. Um, sometimes you take it off work, so it's taking money away that away from the home for what you love to do and what you want to do. Uh, the other thing is that when you're dealing with a group as a leader, you have to understand that everybody's personality is not the same. So you're dealing with uh, with several different personalities, and you have to be able to still communicate and get everyone on the same page. Even though we have all, even though we may all have different personalities. We have to all be on the same page as to the goals that we want to achieve, as well as what we're trying to accomplish. And the first thing and foremost is it has to be about ministry. Because if it's not about ministry, then at that point, all the separate agendas come in. Where So we just, we, we the first thing is like we, we want to keep it godly. Uh, we have to keep it family. And what I mean by family is that, hey, we all we all sink or swim together, regardless of the situation. We're going to be together, and, and we're going to we're going to fight this situation together. We're going to excel in this situation together, and we look out for one another. I'm, and I'm not just talking about in the group. I'm talking about uh, outside of of the group format too, and that's what I mean by family. You know, 
we, we, we check on each other. We make sure that, that everything is going well. We try to share, you know, knowledge with each other to help each other to, to progress forward, you know. Um, so, and that's, that's one of the great things about the group that we have is that no, no, no situation, it's just like a marriage. No marriage is perfect. There's issues that arise in that marriage. It's how you handle those issues that that makes the marriage that much stronger and keeps it keeps it thriving. And if you keep God first at the center of it, it all works out. So that's that's what we've done. Uh, we have a family atmosphere and a godly ordained atmosphere with, within the group. You know, everybody. It's just on the same page, and it takes all three of those in order to keep a group together. Because when you when you're not when you don't have God first, and you don't have a family atmosphere, and and everybody's not on the same page, now you got people pulling different ways. You got different agendas. Uh, what I may mean by different agendas, some people may be simply uh, traveling with the group for money and not ministry. Some people may be. Uh, want to some people may when you when you're when you're not a family you're not on the same page what i mean by different agendas some people's agenda may be awards some people's agenda may be uh how many songs uh we go we gonna get here or some people's agendas may be that i want to travel the world some people's agenda may be i don't want to travel so you have to make sure everybody on the same page and, and keep the family atmosphere and the godly atmosphere. And the Lord, the Lord has taken care of us. Uh, I mean, we've had, we've met some good friends out here that we call brothers on, on this road and traveling. We've met a lot of good people there and, and you all, you, you know, you run into some people that are not as, as, you know, as, as nice and as, as, Consuming as you as, as you would like, but for the most part, God has attached us to to some some very good brothers and sisters in Christ. And you talked about um, keeping a family atmosphere within your group, and that leads me to my next question: How are you able to balance your music career with your home life? Um, me personally. When, uh, when I met, when me and my, when I met, uh, my wife, I was already, uh, I was already singing. She was singing in, in another group. So the one thing about it is that our families support us, uh, and they under, they already understand what we do, what we love to do. Um, and so that's kind of the easiest part they understand and, and some of our families has been doing this for years so they they already understand you know they, they've done it themselves so uh, they, it's just simply having an understanding you know we, we try and take care of home first and foremost and that way everything is you know we're not we're not leaving and, and things are in a disarray at home then you know we have outside assistance uh, our manager uh, Miss Tierney Bledsoe, she she does she she keeps a lot of things in perspective that we that for as far as getting things taken care of for us, so the load is not so heavy, you know. Once we go on the road, so not necessarily as far as as the home life as you asked, but like it's easier to take care of things in the home life if 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 someone else is already handling the things for the group. So that's kind of what that's kind of kind of that kind of gives it the balance because things are still getting done for the group while while we're able to handle the things at home. What inspires your lyrics? Uh, what, uh, there's two things. The first thing is Bible. It is the word. You know, the first thing is Bible. The next thing is that even though it's Bible, you still have to be able to give them give your audience uh, lyrics of things that they can relate to that, that goes on in our everyday life. And so, and you have to intertwine that biblically. So for instance, there are some people that are going through depression. 
There's some people that are going through addictions, whether it be drug addiction, uh, alcohol addiction, uh, gambling addiction. You know, so you have to be able to to give them Bible and everyday life within that same song. So, and that's that's kind of how we base it. Uh, one of the songs that the title of the last album was "Get Right." And it's a, it's a song that basically says, get right, time is winding up, get right. But when you listen to the lyrics, it tells you. Uh, there's Bible in there. We have mothers against daughters, fathers against sons, you know. So it, it, it's, it's Bible, but it's, 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 it's reality as well. So that, that's how we like to, to write our music. Where are some of the places that you've performed? Form many churches and out and auditoriums. Uh, recently, here back in January, we were able to to perform at our brothers, the Clark Brothers of Alabama. We uh, we actually got to perform on the campus of Tuskegee University uh, with with our brothers, the Clark Brothers, their anniversary, and that was that was a that was an historic moment because Tuskegee is 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 a is a very uh important historical fact in that i don't know if all the african americans know but that's a very important part in time for us as african americans uh we've done the house of blues new orleans we've done the house of blues houston um we've been several places we've been we've done akron ohio cincinnati ohio Dayton, Ohio, um, Sardis, Mississippi, you name it. We've we've been we've been to quite a few places. Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so we we've been to quite a few places that we've had the opportunity to, uh, to see. We've uh, now before everything was changed over. We you know we did the Kansas City Spirit Fest. Uh, We've done the Iowa State Fair. We've done the uh, Taste of Omaha. Uh, we've also was a part of the Juneteenth Celebration and Parade. Uh, we've done the West Fair. So it's, it's kind of been a lot of different things over the span of time. Uh, we've done several churches, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> you pretty much Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, um, you, you name it. The Lord has allowed us to be able to go to a, you know, a plethora of places, and we're looking to even go to even more. There's some places that we we haven't been that that it looks like they're going to be coming uh, here real soon. So, can you talk about what it's like performing live in front of an audience? Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, we, as I was saying, uh, we like to minister, so to perform in front of an audience, I don't necessarily look to perform, uh, look to minister, because, and, and I am not by any means knocking uh, performance, because I understand there is, there are some people that come from ministry, there's some people that come from performance, there's some people that come, you know, and, they, they, and it all can tie in together. Uh, the first thing I would say about us, I look to minister uh, first and foremost because uh, there's a lot of people that come to concerts and events that won't go to church. Um, and, and when I say that, is they're, they're coming, they're hurting, they're broken, uh, they're depressed, they're suicidal. So I want to be able to minister to those people uh, because it's, it's a sad thing that, that you come in broken and then you leave broken too because nobody has ministered to the, the issues or the things that you have going on. I remember so many times uh, when, when I was going through uh, and and you you you're the the one thing about ministering 
is when you it, when you minister to others, it's, you have to have something poured into you as well. You have to be ministered to. And I, I remember so many times you go you go with a smile on your face, and because you have a smile on your face, people don't realize that you're broken. They don't realize that you're hurting on the inside because all they all we tend to see as humans is the the outer shell. And I see you smiling, and I think, oh, everything is okay. Oh, Sean, Sean, Sean is doing good. You know, every time I see the brother, he's smiling, and you know, he high five and give me some dap, and don't know that Sean may be going home dealing with depression, dealing with shut off notices, dealing with. You know, the home was falling apart, and people don't see that because they don't, they don't, they don't dive in to really find out how Sean is doing. Because most of the time, when we say, "Hey, how, how you doing?" They're, oh man, I'm doing good. That's the end of the conversation. We don't really tap in to say, "Hey, you know, we, we're, we're not, we're not real all the time." So you have to be able to. I like, I like to minister. Oh yes, don't get me wrong. I, we like to dance too, so <laughs> so that's the part of the the performance error part of it. But uh, we like to minister first, first and foremost, because it's it. Like I said, there's just so many people, and and all we ever see is the outer shell. And I can remember being in a place myself where I felt like life was falling apart, but every time they see me, I was smiling and I was singing, so they felt everything was okay. Nobody really knew that I was dying on the inside. So it's it's always good to minister. We love performing, uh, but ministry takes place. Ministry takes place. And it's nothing like, I, I tell you, uh, Sean, uh, over the course of, from the time when I got sick to till the time that we got back to singing, I can't tell you the number of people who were blessed by simply me telling my testimony of how God delivered me, you know, through the cancer situation. Because there was a time when I was on my sick bed, I'll be honest, when I was on my sick bed, I said, I was talking to the Lord and they told me, you know, I was, I was okay. And I was, I was like, you know, if you let me, when you let me get up from this, I'm going to tell the world. Well, when I got up from it and, and everything was okay, I, you know, they came, no chemo, no nothing. It's gone. I don't have to worry about it. When I got up, I had second thoughts because I'm like, if I tell this story, people will think that I'm sick. And I began fighting with that mentally. And, 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 and then the Lord said confirmation that I allowed you to not have to go through what others have gone through for that you can let them know that I am a healer. And, and when I begin telling my testimony, Sean, you wouldn't believe the number of people that have, I'm talking about old, older, middle age, young, like, man, you, you really, that testimony really blessed me. And they've gone through it. They watched their family members go through it, and it didn't turn out the same way in some cases. And in some cases, they were able, they had to go through chemo, but they were able to survive it. So... Um, it's like all these things, all these things is, is, is a part of what shapes us. And, and to see that these people are blessed by what the Lord has put within us. That's, I mean, that, that I, 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 I can't ask for anything more. If, if I never was to get any awards to be able to bless God's people is the award enough for me. And being so, and being that you've uh, been in, been involved in music over such a long period of time, what's some advice that you could give a musician uh, just starting out or one that's aspiring to have a career in music? I tell everybody that I talk to, uh, get a solid foundation, and the solid foundation, yes, God, church. But as far as the people that you have attached to your ministry, sometimes, and I know people may not, some people may not agree with this, sometimes 
you don't want the most talented individual. You want the one that's humble, willing to learn, willing to listen, and willing to grow with your ministry. Because you have to have uh, uh, you have to have a foundation. You have your 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 unit has to have a foundation where you can say, okay, well, um, I have I have uh, X Y Z and G, and no matter how tough it gets, us five are going to stick together and make it work. Now there may be a few that we have along with that that drop off, but us five are going to still be be there. And we can build from that foundation because we know what our foundation is and then you create around your foundation. I tell them because the one thing that there's a lot of things to learn uh, about the music business. There's so many groups that are just talented on stage. They get up and oh man they'll sing and play 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 the roof off the building but when they leave the stage that's where it stops they don't understand that there's uh, there's a lot of technical and business aspects to to being an artist not no nah, I'm not I'm, and I don't want to I'm not trying to separate the ministry from from the artist because they go hand in hand, but you have there's so many things that I had to learn trial and error. There's so many things that I had to contact people who uh, are are not that don't look like me, that don't uh, associate with me to get information. Because the people who look like me and associate with me uh, was not willing to share that information. So I mean, as far as encoding your project, the steps to, to filling out copyright forms, you know, it, it took some people who don't look like me to show me these things. There's still some things that I, I want to learn um, uh, as far as some of, some of the business aspects of it, but the one thing that I learned is when, is when I was taught to me, I, I don't mind teaching and helping others because uh, somebody had to show me. It's, I, I, I feel that it, you know, and, and granted, I know some people use it as a business. So maybe that's why they don't choose to teach it. I don't use that part as a business for me. I could, but I don't. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather you learn. Because and it's the same thing with anything, uh, Sean. If you, if there is, if I, 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 I give you an example. I tell my, uh, I tell my uncles now all the time. Uh, I wasn't around uh, to meet my mother's father, uh, but I was told he was one of the best uh, architects. In, in in Mississippi, in in that time, they said he was building everybody's houses, the stores, everything. I wasn't around to hear. I wasn't around to see all the things that they see to know who he was because that's our lineage. So I tell my uncles all the time, if you got, I, because I forced them to talk. You know, I I, I quit. I start asking a bunch of questions, and some of the stuff they probably are comfortable with. Some of the things they probably don't want to don't want to say. But I ask questions because I want to know. And I tell them, I said, part of the family reunion should be that you all should be you, to take the men, the men, the, the us younger ones that are under you all, and and give us our history. Tell us about Grandpa and things like this. Because my thing is, is and, and what I said that to say this. It's just like this, this, the reason I share, and I'm not, I don't try to charge people for this, is because it's just like that. If, if all of us that know, if we, of all the ones that know, if we die and take the information to the grave with us, who's to come behind us? 
See, it's only what it's only what we what we, we for instance, me, you, we can only do what we've been taught or what we've learned. So if if nobody shares or teaches you anything, you'll only know so much. So I try to always share and tell young artists and young groups and encourage them and say, hey, you got to do this, 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 and this. You know, don't just don't just go in the studio and, and think that now, all right, the project's done, because that's when the real work starts. There's more to do. Before you talk about releasing it, you, you, you can release it, but if you release it, nobody knows about it, nobody has any clue of it, and then you release it, and it's not copywritten, and then the next thing you know, somebody that's a little more well-established than you starts singing them songs, then your jaws is tight. But because you didn't take care of the proper business things, the law says that it's theirs now. <laughs> Where can fans go to hear your music? Huh? Where can fans go to hear your music? Uh, uh, all, all major digital outlets. Um, you can contact. You can contact us. We can get you the music. Uh, CD Baby, iTunes, Spotify. Uh, we now under the old name of Second Chance, we even are on Pandora. So, uh, so Pandora, that, I mean, it's free service. Uh, so we're even on Pandora for the old project. Uh, you, you name it. Uh, like I said, it is it's online. Now the old project again, you would have to look up look us up under Second Chance. But the but the single is under the chosen few of Omaha, Hall, so that that's and that's still on all digital outlets. We do have this, uh, but you would have to contact us or CD Baby as far as the disc. And I mean the other outlets would be able to get your disc too. But uh, those are the places that I know right offhand that uh, you are able to get the music from. And as we finish up. Is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge for offering financial or emotional support? Uh, yes, uh, definitely Tierney Bledsoe. She has she has been uh, she's our manager. She has really been a rock, and she's really uh, she's really done a lot and pushed the group. And understanding that without without the financial support, it as well as the just the overall getting things done outside of not even necessarily financial but there's a lot of things that, that has to be done that it takes the pressure off of us because the one thing that's unique about our group we don't all live in Omaha <laughs> so just to rehearse it costs us that's why I said you have to have a strong foundation because it, it, I mean, when we leave, we, we got to leave just to rehearse. So it's, it, you have to have a strong camp, and it, and it costs. I mean, you know what it costs. I mean, the average person know what it costs to travel. You can't go across the, too much across the street for free no more. So, But I'm, I'm thankful the Lord has allowed us to be able to do it. Uh, my brother, he, uh, Marcus, he's the bass player. He, he also sings. He's retired, Purple Heart military. Uh, you know, we just have we just have a plethora of different guys in the group, and everybody. You know, it's a sacrifice, but I'm thankful to the people that God has sent to be a part of this because they make that sacrifice. So we're gonna keep pushing on. But but for the most part, my, my family, my mom, uh, she's she's always she's always supported us. Uh, I got sisters, uncles, cousins. I mean, there's so there's so many. Our wives, they they support us. Um, so I mean, there, there's there's a lot of people that that have supported us. But I definitely want to thank Tierney because she really she really goes above and beyond for us. All right, I want to say a very big thank you to my guest today, Courtney Jackson. As always, write your comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. 
And for all of your promotion, marketing, and music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com. As always, write your comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. And for all of your promotion, marketing, and music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com.